Hello and welcome back to Bearwood West Yard, where you join me, Jordan, the sole owner and creator of Bearwood West Yard, for my latest video, and a rather important one too, Project 23. So Project 23 is essentially about uh, ironing out all the faults and uh, writing the, the difficulties that I found uh, throughout 2022 and all the previous years um, that I'd worked and have been making Bearwood West Yard. So essentially over the last 18 months, because I'd moved out of the family home and that's where Bearwood West Yard was based. It was built there as a permanent setup in a bedroom and I was spending, when I was living there, I'd be able to work every evening for as long as I wanted uh, on the layout. Whereas in the 18 months that I've been moved out, it's it's been difficult. I've not been able to spend as much time as what I'd wanted to spend on there, which is why noticeably layout updates became, well, very few and far between compared to what they had been in previous years and as to why there'd been no running sessions whatsoever. Um, I had actually planned to get at least three up last year and I don't think I managed any. So yeah this is going to be quite wordy and uh, it's going to be quite a lot of explaining actually uh, in this video. Don't worry I will be including some running shots just to break up the video a little bit and a little montage uh, just so you don't get bored. So essentially and um, I when I had finished with the November layout update I got to a point where because I just decided to relay all the track I'd just put a load of inv I'd invested a lot of time and energy into the layout uh, especially to utilize all the wasted space on the under underbed boards and to give myself um, a larger yard so I could store more uh, without having to take things on and off the layout. Now it was when I was soldering up the track that I was thinking the pace that I'm going I'm going to be here till June and the yard still won't even be uh, be done because I was managing about uh, sol soldering up about four wires a week at that point I was spending so little time over there and I just thought, well, the access that I was getting as well to pulling the wires through, because of how low the boards were to the floor, to be able to um, enable the trains to make it under underneath the bed frames, I just couldn't manage it anymore, as put it like that. So I decided, right, I'm going to go back to basics, I'm going to call it a day, and I'm going to future-proof the layout. So what I've decided to do is I'm scrapping uh, Bearwood West Yard as it's known as now and I'm starting afresh with a new layout. That is project 23. So I've already begun designing and work starting on the new baseboards uh, for the new layout. It, it will still be called Bearwood West Yard, as I have no doubt about that, as that is, well, that is what the layout is, as to me. I, I couldn't imagine having uh, a layout with a different name, if that makes sense. Um, but essentially, uh, this new layout, uh, 
it opens up it's going to open up a lot of new horizons for me i think because in terms of baseboard construction anyway i'm planning on going for the open baseboard uh, technique so essentially having the main four foot by two foot section uh, and then having the raised track bed about two to three inches above it so that you can then have like what looks as if the tracks actually have uh, raised up on an embankment so uh, that would be quite good especially if i wanted to add in bridges or rivers um, or even just a little stream of of some sort uh, just for that little bit more interest so uh, i'm definitely pushing the boat out there in terms of well pushing my luck and skill set definitely uh, but it's something that the old layout never featured so because that was all um, built straight on top of the baseboard and then the scenery at the same level and built upwards so everything was almost in a cutting rather than like on an embankment and having that flexibility to have both um, but then again I didn't have the skill set when I first uh, built that layout and I was heavily restricted in terms of uh, what I could and couldn't do so by so essentially having the new layout it's going to um, enable me to advance the layout building skills that I've that I've already got but it's also uh, in terms of um, portability and future proofing it's it's secured both of those because I'm not going to have to hack the layout to pieces to be able to move it from house to house or uh, if I was to ever be invited to an exhibition then it's not like I'm going to have to hack something to pieces uh, just to be able to get out the front door so I'm quite excited about that and I'm definitely uh, learning the new skills uh, to build the layout and yeah I'm I'm looking quite forward to it In terms of track plan, I've come up with something rather ambitious and you can see it on your screens now in front of you. So this looks a lot more like Eastley Yard than what Bearwood West Yard looks like, definitely in terms of point work. So the yard uh, remains with uh, three, three to four sidings and also includes a pair of dead end sidings. Uh, towards the right of the track of the track plan which can be used for seasonal RHTT workings uh, as well as for wagon maintenance etc uh, with a line going out to the fiddle yard alongside the main four sidings in the yard are two reception roads which will be quite unique in the sense that they enable freight trains to come off of the main line and await a, part, await a gap in the timetable so, so that something such as a pair of class 450s or a Voyager can come rushing through uh, or even a, or even uh, one of the 159s or 158s that I've got uh, uh, can rush through on an express and, uh, th and then uh, the freight train can then uh, follow uh, all the yellow or, or the caution aspects behind it However, another aspect that I do quite like about this, this track plan is that just to the left of the station you've got a small siding which is where I could potentially have class 450s terminating, uncoupling and the train dividing uh, such as what happens at Bournemouth where, um, where half of the Tankar uh, 444s uh, will continue on to Weymouth and then the rear five coaches will go into the middle signings or back to Bournemouth depot so that will be uh, rather interesting in that respect and with the previously mentioned open baseboard effect I think I should be able to quite nicely model the river Stour it's quite a wide river so it may take up quite a bit of space uh, however I've never actually modeled uh, water or river before so again uh, something else to add to the skill set and I think would also bring a lot of interest as well uh, scenic in terms of scenics 
Now, in terms of layout size, I intend that the main scenic area, and I am pushing, I am pushing my luck here, that the main scenic length of the layout will be 16 foot, so relatively large. However, I am trying to pack a lot of track work into a very well, relatively small area, and that so. In terms of the less is more in terms of uh, track work, in terms of scenery to track work, um, then I think that in this instance it's going to look very busy as it should, um, but I also want to try and get a fine balance. And this is all subject to change, but this is, well, this is my first draft of what I've come up with, what I've actually drawn that I kind of like. So. I think this has got potential uh, to go uh, to go further actually and I have also thought about in the section uh, between the uh, where the reception roads are created and where also uh, the siding is for uh, the uh, for the uncoupled uh, units I'm thinking of also having in an extra one or maybe two uh, baseboards to go in there just to lengthen that siding and also uh, the whole yard as a whole so that I can also uh, well even uh, extend the fiddle yard as well so that I can run longer trains and make the Hatton 66's uh, start to feel like a Backman 66 uh, when it comes to uh, somewhat heavy train loads. So I could really get full length trains in as that is uh, one of the things that I enjoy about the layout. So Now for the portability side of the layout, this is something that I missed out on in an earlier section. Now a lot of people I've seen have their baseboards with uh, normal legs or they mount uh, the, lay the layout on a table when they go to an exhibition or something. However, I was going to mount mine on uh, woodworking trestles. However, given the price of them, I've thought, well, it's it's fairly expensive considering that uh, there's a lot of new wagons now coming out. So, Revolution Trains have released their IPAs, which I I got some because they're they're a wagon that I that I've grown up with uh, on the Southampton to Halewood trains. Um, and I thought, well, the amount of money that I'd be spending on the trestles, considering that for a, for a pair of Stanley ones, uh, they're about £40 a pair, and even then being Q's own ones, which aren't quite wide enough, are about uh, £26 a pair. So it's very much a case of how can I cost cut in that sense. So I'm currently in the research and development stage of uh, fixing um, lockable hinges onto uh, the baseboards so I'm currently trying out a couple of different brands at the minute and seeing whether they're any good and if not then I may end up having to go for um, a very old school standard hinge but with a uh, but with a bolt lock uh, on one of the legs just to either lock it in the closed position uh, when it's being transported or stored um, and then um, also locking it into position again uh, when it's in the upright uh, position uh, so that nothing falls apart. I've also to make sure that uh, the baseboards align uh, perfectly every time I've also um, gone for uh, tension clips uh, which you can find on extending tables so uh, that was uh, considering that um, it was actually uh, somewhere I went that had these. I thought, you know what, that's not a bad idea actually. So I've decided to incorporate that as well, just so that the alignment, uh, so that when the baseboards come together, just so that there's no, um, so that there's no uh, misalignment in the track, uh, hopefully those should get it perfect every time so that's something that I look forward to uh, seeing play out so there's a lot of research and development going on in the background um, of the baseboard building 
and as I for sure am definitely, um, well, I'm a novice when it comes to this, so, um, but yeah, I do hope to be back by the end of February uh, with some baseballs. In terms of building the new layout, I've already bought some of the 9mm ply and timber. Now, before I go about uh, building the baseboards up, now that I'm in a position to start planning the next layout, I've just laid a couple of boards down just to see how the baseboard corners would best fit as to whether it'd be best to have this board on the corner or this board as it is here just to see where best to get the baseboard join because on the track diagram i want to make sure that none of the points that i have or as it says on the track diagram uh co ends up being on a baseboard join or ends up uh with the point motor part ending up being on a uh, strengthening uh, beam, if that makes sense, uh, on the frame. So I, I want to make sure that everything's in the right place. And so far, I'm quite happy with how this corner's being. So I think I'm going to have it like this. So that's, that's stage one of layout planning done. Now, when it comes to this corner here, which will be um, on the leftmost side of the layout from the viewing side, it's worth a mention that I am using track setters for this. So the inside line, which is the concrete sleepered track, that will be fifth radius. So I can essentially get the outermost line, which is the wooden sleepered track. I thought it'd be easier just to kind of color code it. Uh, would will be a sort of sixth radius, just to give a, a nice sweeping curve, or as best as what I can get it. So. Hopefully uh, that will look nice and it won't have any uh, sudden sharp bits here and uh, nice sweeping bits there. So it's all, all nice and even. Yeah, so that wraps up now uh, for Project 23. So thank you very much for watching. I, as always, I value uh, your viewership and I hope to see you in the next video. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Jordan and this is Bearwood West Yard.